if you change the typology of dining into a, a, a set of tools where you can experience experience food and uh, connect with stories, then you have the power to create starting points for people to uh, yeah to connect with the stories and tell it, tell it to others. And then we have a collective story for a better future. Jasper Udik Tenkate is my guest on this episode of Inside Ideas, brought to you by 1.5 Media and Innovators Magazine. Jasper is an artist and designer, a true creative, founder of Creative Chef Studio, 15 years in the food business and six years as an artist. This wonderful Creative Chef Studio is a multidisciplinary art and design studio. From his studio, he and his team create experiences that evolve around artwork, design objects, and stories that are often but not necessarily linked with food. These experiential recipes use ingredients like biotech, physics, coding, music, philosophy, product design, biodiversity, fashion, graphics, painting, and all kinds of other disciplines that you could imagine. He says each of his experiences are a true performance. They are experiential recipes that are served in space and time all over the world. His studio is also specialized in creative art direction, product development, and marketing strategies for company. And he has worked for companies like Nike, Reebok, Google, Bright Food, Shanghai Bass, BASF, Rabobank, Abnamoro, and many, many more. Besides that, Jasper's a good friend of mine. And we met <laughs> at, uh, yeah. Yes. Welcome to the show, Jasper. So Thank good you, Mark. to be here. Uh, we actually uh, first met at an event in Copenhagen in Denmark called La Future from a, another mutual friend of ours, Nils Müller and Trend One. And we both were speaking there and we were both kind of experiencing the event and we both participated and kind of got the short end of the stick. We both participated in this event for Climate Kick, for EIT, the European Institute of Technology, around food, framing food for the future, what it looks like. And, and it was a workshop that took a substantial amount of our time and input and thoughts. Um, while the rest of La Future were kind of out eating and cruising on a boat and having fun and experiencing different things of the city so we got the short end of the stick but that's how we met and and we just hit it off and i'm so glad that you've you've been able to come and be a part of the show and and talk to me today thank you and and, and welcome thank you mark thank you um you have been doing this for a long time so you have background as a musician you play a couple of instruments a keyboard was moved out of the way before we started the podcast and and uh, you enjoy music and kind of that uh, entertainment experience uh, in all you do, but you're a true artist and creative and, and, and all you do. You've been dealing with food experience and design for quite some time, but there's a strong underlying tone of sustainability, environment, uh, plant protein, yes. kind of healthy food, clean food, you grow a lot of your own food. And so my, my big question is, we've just experienced a shit storm of craziness this last 12 plus months. How has all that experience and what you've been working on been for your design studio, the Creative Chef Studio, uh, been for you personally? Um, has growing your own food given you a little bit more resilience during this time? How have you weathered this crazy time? Tell us about yeah. it. Yeah, it's a good question. I think I think uh, it's 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 a good era for, for my studio to, to yeah, really focus more on the things I think that are important in my work. 
So I think it's really important to reconnect with 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 the the, the topics so, uh, I'm I'm focused on. So uh, it gave me a lot of time to think and to to plan ahead for the future. And I think it's also an era uh, that 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 gave momentum for change. So that's I think it's a really good thing uh, because for me. I, will, I was working on the topic of sustainability. How can we grow food to make the world a little bit better? How 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 should we do things in the future? And I think this crazy time uh, created a stage for those ideas. So that's that's the thing that is really good about it. On the other hand, um, I'm a busy guy and I like to do stuff. So so yeah, it's 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 a dual kind of thing. I'm, I miss uh, going out and cook for people and uh, create experiences because that's what's now uh, on a flat level. But um, overall, I think um, for for the, the main purpose, I do my stuff to make the world a little bit better. Uh, I think it's a good thing for humanity to uh, experience some hardship. Did, did you realize that the way you've structured your life, not only your studio or your business, but you grow some of your own food, some of the things you had um, the ability now to kind of be more at home, reconnect, do some do some other things as well in your studio. But that that gave you a little bit more resilience or time to say, hey, you know, the, I, I have been on the right way for a long time that this is a better way to live and model and although it has um, has been a difficult time for all and we've kind of missed that social thing you've found some really creative ways to reconnect with people one of them i'm going to mention before you answer the question um, is you sent me a wonderful food box of food a, a food experience and it was through the mail and if it wasn't for and i have to kind of be a little mad if it wasn't for the dutch posts uh messing up my address and, and their slow delivery times, uh, the experience would have been absolutely seamless. And it was, even when I got the package, it was fabulous and I enjoyed uh, every bit of it, um, uh, that you found some other creative ways to still share that food experience, that creativity with people. And then what we did is when we got the box, we got jumped on Zoom and we cooked in front of each other and ate the food and and drank over Zoom in front of each other. So and, and it wasn't just me; it was a, a bunch of bunch of uh, our our friends and acquaintances from La Futura and and Niels. And so uh, you've you've done that among many other things. So there's a museum, a, a project, and some others. Tell us a little bit about that, and and and, and try to answer that question the best I uh, best you can. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's good to mention, yeah, because of uh, some hardship or different times, uh, you have to act. So for me, it's important to bring over my story, yeah? to bring over the story of a better world. Uh, how can we eat in the future? Uh, so um, we will be more balanced with, with ecosystem in the world. So uh, indeed, I came with, with the, those boxes. So, so I created these boxes. I also sent them to schools and uh, other things in, in Holland to, uh, yeah, to really interact with people and uh, cook together a future meal. And each ingredient is connected with, 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 with I think, hopeful uh, innovations like uh, uh, insects, um, seaweeds. Um, uh, if we eat less meat, what should we eat? So all those things, uh, I combine them and, and I, I think uh, it gave me a light in my head that I can reach more people if I do it in, in this way. So that, that's a good, that's a very good thing. Um, and, and, and I believe um, it's going to stay here also. So I, 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 yeah, I found a new way to, to tell my story, not only on exhibitions or live analog experiences, but also on a, on a, in a way um, that we can uh, uh, connect with uh, people through. Uh, the computer and send food to to them so they can really enjoy and experience the future of food so that was a good thing and and yeah and and that's that's uh that brings me also to my my other project the museum of taste i was we were talking about it earlier 
and um, I, I think that's the the base, the foundation of this new way of of, of, of connecting with people. So I'm working together with a gardener in uh, near my uh, studio, and uh, we created a, a museum-like experience in a garden. And what we do is. Uh, when there's no COVID, we ask people to come over to the garden, to the Museum of Taste. And what we do there, we grow foods uh, in an old fashioned way, just on the land with no greenhouses, but in a piece of garden. And we, we grow old varieties of vegetables. And uh, all those uh, vegetables are um, uh, planted and the, the, the seeds are from a, a seed bank from the Wageningen University. Um, and uh, the seeds are dating back uh, to 1850. So we have an old carrot from 1893. Uh, we have a few old uh, cucumbers. We have all kinds of varieties of apples, beetroots. Uh, and they are literally a time, uh, yeah, like it, it goes back in taste. You, you can taste the past. And uh, the idea behind it that what was um, when you ask a uh, people what color has a cucumber or a kid, everybody says green. And I, and that, that, that I started thinking that's a, that's a strange thing because uh, there are a lot more varieties. So we grow also all kinds of colors of cucumbers in that Museum of Taste. Uh, and that was the idea to, to create a museum like garden where people could come and experience the stories of old varieties. They can taste it, and when they taste it and experience those stories of, of other crops that are not uh, 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 in the supermarket, then, then they understand how it works. People lost a little bit of the connection with, 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 with varieties, with, with, with all the possibilities of, of, of vegetables and other and biodiversity. So that was a way, I think, to connect people with a story that will bring the world also uh, to a next level in the sense of uh, when you taste uh, potential uh, possibilities, when you taste uh, biodiversity, people will uh, connect with it. They will understand it. When you only hear it, then, um, then you, maybe you'll talk to somebody else. But when you actually taste it, then, then you'll uh, be more interested and you'll be wanting more of that. So that's a project and people hear about it. I bring them to the table in the end and in the end they taste it. But the thing is, I only reached in a year, I only reached like a hundred people who experience it. And sometimes I'm a, I was at a big exhibition somewhere and I, I had a small tasting, uh, but I always work with local stuff so i was never able to really uh do that but but this is this era now is for me yeah i can i can send a package to you you can hear the story of all those plants and all those great seeds and all those um uh, uh, uh future possibilities and then i can reach a bigger audience so that's a really good thing i think and as we were mentioning uh Cooking food, creating experiences, talking to people—that's that's that's part of a bigger thing. It's we are you, me. We are creating a collective story for a better world. So I think that's a that's a good thing. Uh, and 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 this era brought us more potential uh, uh, reach of our stories, man. Yeah, I think it's fabulous. So not only do you kind of take everybody on a time warp journey back, uh, back, to, oh, you can almost say back to the future, You're giving them a, a, a trip back in history, but then bringing it into the future and say, you know, there's so many varieties. I've been fortunate enough to taste some of these historical uh, crops that you're talking about and, and species, uh, not only when you cooked for me, but before. Um, I, I think it is absolutely fabulous that you're reconnecting people with um, other species of foods, kind of giving them a new look at the world of food. You're being creative. And in the process, you really show them that there's flavor and taste and that taste of history can come back. And it's pretty, pretty amazing. It's a good, good meal, good flavors, things that you can do with that. Um, you, you, 
uh, have this innate knack to, to do that, to connect people with experiences around food and creativity to make it fun. There's another project you worked on where it's for the people who are blind, do I understand, that yes. can't see something, yeah. but they can have an art and food experience at the same time, even though they can't see it. And it's kind of, it's a, it's beyond, you know, uh, dining in the dark or, you know, this eating in the dark, but it's, it's an experience that you've, you've received some resonance in before. Can you tell us a little bit about that and how, how that works and, and what you've, you've reached there? And then, then I want to kind of touch bef before we move on. You say only you've only reached about 100 people in this last crazy pandemic time, but I believe some of those people can help you achieve that critical mass where they they have connections to another 100 people or another and they tell Second, yeah. the experiences that you create and that it will really create a big movement. I believe that's one why we're here today, but also that I've seen that in the past with your work where it has really far reaching potential. Thanks. Yeah, 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 I, I can tell you. So, so the project you were talking about, it started out as Taste the Dutch Masters. It was a project for a museum in, uh, in the, the Netherlands, in The Hague, the Mauritz House, it's called. And uh, what I actually did was, it was, a, it was an exhibition of old 17th century um, uh, still life paintings by old Dutch master painters. And uh, they, asked, they asked me, can you think of something? And what I did, I recreated one. I copied one um, in a, as a 3D version. So it's like a, it's like a, a black box with a, uh, it, sh it shows like a, it's, it's like a painting. And I, I, I put the, the, the food in. And when I, when I was there, a group of visitors came and I told a story about the foods which were in it and the, the background of the painting and the perspectives, and they had a, a blind person with them, uh, with, with bad seeing. And uh, she was there and she thought, well, I, I'm here with these guys, maybe they, they could tell me something about the paintings, but he, uh, the guy didn't uh, uh, expect that he would actually feel and taste a work of art. So in, in one second, uh, you saw him uh, experiencing this work, touching, feeling everything, and and at that moment, I realized so this is a way blind people can can experience art. They cannot see it because art is mainly a visual thing for for people. But they, I can tell them a story, and, and while feeling, he can understand the reason why it's a, a beautiful painting or or the stories behind it. So that brought me to think uh, uh, of a new project, um, and and we're now uh, a few years later, and I, I'm bringing it, this project to. Uh, the Centraal Museum in Utrecht, and we're going to do a show. It's called The Blind Spot. And what we actually did, we created uh, uh, the same experience, but now we enhanced the project with, with materials. So blind people can feel shadow, and they can eat, they can uh, uh, hear an audio tour. Um, but we also invite people who can see uh, to experience th this this work, uh, we blindfold them, and in that way they will uh, interact with art in a new way, uh, with through other senses, uh, and in, in, at the same moment they will understand more how it will be to uh, if you can how it is if you cannot see really good, and so so we bring to, together two worlds. So I think what we did in the end we serve inclusivity, right? We, we, we bring to bit together uh, worlds uh, uh, who didn't yeah, connect really well on the level uh, of art. And now we bring them together through art and through food and storytelling, uh, we give understanding for each other. So I think that's, that's, that, that's the power of experience, the power of food, the power of storytelling. And uh, yeah, that, that's, it's a nice pro project. So we're got, I'm really looking forward to doing that. That's so great. Thank you for telling us about that. The, the other thing my listeners don't know is you have your own cookbook, your own uh, book. It's called Creative Chef, How to Create a Mind-Blowing Food Experience. Yeah. Um, it's uh, also sold out. We've got to get on the publisher to get more 
uh, uh, sent out and, and, and print, but it's a fabulous packed with recipes, stories, tips, tricks, and to turn your dinner into just an amazing experience. You have um, children of your own, and I don't know if that was any inspiration for the book or how it came. Can you tell us a little bit, uh, besides you being creative, besides your music and the, the way you design and, and have these experiences, what led you to, to get into this and, and how, did, how did you birth this baby? Yeah, yeah, it, I think it was a process. So I, I, uh, um, I cooked a long time, but it was all, uh, when I was young, I wanted to be a, a painter or an artist or a drummer, but, but my parents said, you have to go to a university. So I went to university and then uh, during my studies, I started cooking. Uh, and I found a stage in cooking. So that, that, that was my creative output. And after a few years, I started my own cater uh, company. I, I founded a, a cooking studio, uh, entre entrepreneurial uh, adventures. And then in the end, um, when I was working for, the, for all my clients, uh, the artist in me came up and uh, I wanted to, to stretch the typology of dining. Why are we always sitting down and do or we always do the same stuff? I think things become more exciting when you, when you, when you twist a little nudge here, when you, when, you, when you have a different perspective, when you perceive the act of dining in a different way. Uh, and, and I started doing a little things like adding a notebook uh, uh, or serving a poem or I, I, I did small stuff and people were, were, were really excited about it and then after a while uh, I, I ended up with well maybe there's something in it what do we do when, when we go to eat we're experiencing a moment in space and time so I started thinking a lot about what do you, uh, what do we want when we uh, when we have an experience? We we want to uh, have a stage for our own stories. We we want to connect with stories of others. We want to uh, uh, share stories. Uh, so what things can I come up with to nudge people to uh, yeah to to do that? So I came up with 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 a set of ideas uh, to make the food experience better or more yeah uh, inspirational so i came up uh, with, with 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 usual things like we can add music we can add sense we can uh, add information in different ways and it grew so it grew to a bigger idea and in the end yeah it turned out in in a book uh, about how how can you uh, use these uh, topics to to create a better way of or, or a better way to experience food. And I think experiencing food is uh, very, very important. Um, okay, the book is, is, is really nice and fun, that's, but there's an idea by, uh, behind it because I want to reach as many people po as possible. When you experiencing food in a different way, uh, I, I, I talked earlier about it, then you, then you will remember uh, the experience and when you say something or bring something to the table at that moment in space and time which is actually a good thing for the world or for uh, for educational purposes or maybe market marketing purposes uh, then you are then you have a, the perfect recipe for storytelling so uh, I think I found out that that while doing it making the book uh, it became my my toolkit for for, for for bringing over stories, uh, and uh, in the end, that's I think why we're sitting here now. Uh, there are a lot of problems in the world. We have to fix those problems, uh, and I think uh, uh, we as a human being uh, uh, all have opinions, right? And all those opinions uh, make it. I think it feels for me that it's really slow, <laughs> the progress, uh, because we have all those opinions and ideas and there's, there's a money idea behind it. And, um, but when you are able to create experiences, to create a direction uh, of a story, I call those collective stories, then, um, then we'll, uh, uh, we'll go in the right way. 
Yeah, and then the, so that's the idea behind it. And those experiences are for me starting points for people to connect with that story. And I hope to send them in the right direction. So a long story short, this book was for me uh, like uh, to show that, that if you change the typology of dining into a, a, a set of tools where you can experience, experience food and uh, connect with stories, then you have the power to create starting points for people to, uh, yeah, to connect with the stories and tell, tell it to others. And then we have a collective story for a better future. So that's the idea behind it. It's, it's like a combination of behavioral design connected with food and, um, yeah, and a little bit of purpose. I love that. And it's, it's a wonderful book and I'll, I'll put the link uh, to it on, in the show notes and description and, and <clears throat> so that people can get out there and, and get that and push your publisher to get some more out there <clears throat> for sure. I, I want um, <clears throat> to kind of touch on a, on a sensitive subject and, and see how you've experienced this during this crazy time. So I'm, you originally was a drummer, right? You started out uh, drumming in a band or just yourself or how, tell us a little bit about that. <laughs> yeah, drumming, drumming in a band. I do a lot of, I make, a, I make music. So I have a band, a jazz band, a pop band. I make my own music. So it's like a, a, a semi-professional super hobby. Of me. Great, great, great. Yeah. But uh, I have a lot of creatives who are also artists and musicians and, and talents out there and this uh, around the world. And uh, um, during this time, they've really been hit hard. You know, there's no more clubs, there's no more events, there's no more concerts um, uh, in most places. I mean, there are some places Taiwan have had baseball and sporting events and things and kind of came out faster than others. Uh, but for the majority, most of us have been locked down in this and, and, you know, some have moved to online, you know, this uh, uh, online couch uh, jam sessions and online sessions and things. It's just not the same. It's a little bit different. And so uh, those who solely uh, earn their bread and butter or earn their keep uh, through, through um, music and, and, and creative ways of, in bands or singing, singer songwriters, uh, for the majority have been hit pretty hard, you know, and, and this, and they're like, uh, how, how am I going to pay my bills? How am I going to do this before I was kind of squeaking out before? Um, but then I, I know others, not just like you, um, another good friend of mine is Ava Karetic and, and uh, have many others who, who are performers and artists and musicians that have uh, been pretty well equipped because they had the climate environment. They kind of knew where we were going, what things were on the horizon. They knew that, you know, and they had this diverse palette of tools and things at their things where they could still integrate music and their creativity and be part of that, but do it in a different way so that they could still survive and, and probably not, maybe not as good as they used to, but to get through this time, have you seen that uh, as well with your friends and, and others who kind of, that, that was their soul, soul, uh, life kind of, yeah. uh, concerts, hotels, bars, you know, clubs, whatever, um, doing records or whatever. And, and, and what have you seen? And, and is there, is there a learning lesson from that, a better model or a way to help them to transition and get through or, or what are we seeing in the whole creative uh, field yeah. period? Yeah, it's, it's a good, but very, <laughs> very hard question, maybe, because I think this era shows us that we were not, uh, that we're not on the right track. So uh, on all kinds of levels, food wise, uh, um, um, yeah, the, the economy, how does it, how it works, everything. So, uh, but in the end, the, the people who, who bring uh, stories into life, memories, the musicians, the artists, uh, the people who, who, who come up with the recipes of the food and eh? not, not the big companies who, who sell it. Uh, the chefs, they were all, I think those people are one of the most important people uh, in the world because they provide people with meaning. 
Yeah? So, that, so they provide the content people learn about later on. So when you have an art class, you learn about artists, you learn about musicians, but uh, and all those people, also scientists, scientists they, they come up with ideas, creative ideas. And this era shows that, that the system is not good uh, in a way that, 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 that uh, the, those people who provide those stories, they, they end up being uh, miserable because uh, what should we do? Uh, uh, it's, it's kind of hard. So I see a lot of people struggling, uh, uh, coming up with, with, with new ideas, but it, yeah, it doesn't work now. So they end up um, being uh, hit hard. Uh, and, I, I always, yeah, and I think they, they are one of the most important people also to facilitate, to inspire people to, to, uh, to design a new way of doing things. So I think creativity is now the, a little bit, the creative, the old creative world is like a victim of this era. But the, but the good thing is that creative people are able to come up with good ideas <laughs> and they, they can step outside of the, the boxes and uh, well, they're also able to, yeah, to show resilience and to, to, to come up with new ideas. And I think uh, it's now a, a little bit of a bad time, but we'll be back. <laughs> and, yeah. And, 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 and yeah. I don't think there is a future without creatives. I don't think there's a future without music and, and artists and, and those who inspire us in different ways, um, regardless of what format, what size and how famous they are. They, uh, everyone has a, a role to play and a part to play in creating just a different movement and vision of the world. And, and uh, you know, that goes back to the the comment I made to you, you know, you said during this time, you've only really been able to prepare, you know, about reach about a hundred people with this experience and your meals and, and give, give them that. And I believe that there's a, a strong percentage of those hundred people that are really uh, going to spread the message and that experience that they had that will create a ripple effect of critical mass to reach thousands and, and, and numerous people. So don't ever give up. And, uh, you know, it's kind of, <laughs> it, it's kind of, it's kind of like yeah. a, this, uh, this bow and arrow, you know, you pull back the bow to, to yeah. let the, the arrow go. But during that time, you're pulling it back. It just feels like you're going nowhere. There's, you know, all the energy spent and pulling it back. And it's kind of this pause, but the minute you let that 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 go, boy, the momentum, the takeoff, the critical mass is there. And I see that the work you're doing, that you're continuing to do, uh, uh, is just really going to multiply and explode. And, and I, I guess that's also a message to not just to my listeners, but to those creatives and artists and musicians who are listening uh, don't give up. We need you. We need your songs. We need your messages. We need your music. We, we need your creativity and, and your art um, to really catapult us uh, into a new era, a new yeah. epoch of not just sustainability, but a, a ecological connection with a symbiotic earth, with our earth, and and that we are all earthlings, and we're all we're all. Um, crew members and, and navigators on this spaceship earth none of us are passengers i mean there there kind of is a short period when you're a baby and when you're uh before you pass away when you're maybe um having trouble walking and things and you all you have is certain facilities where you have the right to be a passenger for a certain period of time and you give the ability to other human beings to kind of help to realize that they are also crew members on this earth they're helping the babies and helping the elderly to 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 make that transition and in that learning the importance of life and earthlings that we're all on the spaceship earth um i really want to move into some some harder questions for you and get into re some removing bias and sense making I know you're opinionated. I know you have some strong feelings on the world and, and ecology, but do you feel like you're a global citizen? And, and how would you feel about a world 
with the removal of borders, nations, divisions of humanity, one from another. Tell us your thoughts and feelings on that. Yeah, so that's that's also brokerage, but I think yeah, the thing is, uh, the best uh, thing is would be if there were no borders, if we could all agree with each other, and if we can um, believe in certain values of, of progress, which are not based upon um, economics, but based on balancing out with the ecosystem. I think that's that, that's an important thing. Um, and, and those topics are, um, are really hard because humanity, uh, yeah, we, we are conditioned to get recognition, to, to be seen, to, to let, uh, yeah. So we all have this, this so it's, that, that's a hard thing. And I think when you think of progress or uh, how we, can we make the world a little bit better, um, it's, it's a really hard thing. And so, so my opinion would be that we should st stop, uh, uh, stop uh, having borders so we can, we can speed up things between countries. We should um, uh, start uh, learning kids about uh, a, a healthier food uh, pattern. Uh, uh, we should start, uh, they, we should stop uh, spending our times on, uh, on, 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 on what I call bullshit jobs, but we should uh, grow our own foods. Um, all those things, what, what are the most important things in life? It's, it's water and it's food. Right, so I think we should get rid of all the BS and uh, and focus with each other towards um, a better way of living. And 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 and. But yeah, you know, uh, as as I do, it's really hard to 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 do that. So the only tool I have now as a person is to yeah to facilitate uh, moments where I can uh, tell my story, so people will talk that same little story to others. That's what it is. And uh, I see a lot of problems because yeah, they're all, um, yeah. I think in Europe, you, you see uh, some, some sparks of, of, of young people who are, uh, who are beginning to uh, let go of the old values of, 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 uh, of uh, I, I can remember old days where it was really important to have a big car. So, so I think that's a good step. That, 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 we're, we're, that, that the youth nowadays say, well, well I don't want a car. I, we, can, uh, we can have a, a car with all of the people in the streets. We can share it. So that's a, that's a good sign. Uh, but yeah. You mentioned something that you, you said um, that, that I know that it's a difficult thing. What, what, what specifically do you mean? Is it a politically difficult thing? Is it a, a country-based difficult yeah. thing. What? Why? What do? You, what are you seeing as the difficult thing about it? Or what are your your thoughts and opinion of why why it's difficult? Is it? Uh, and maybe I'll lead you a little bit. Is it the human condition? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is <laughs> because people in China they are conditioned in a different way. Uh, and they see things differently than that you and me do. And we, uh, you and me, we also are, are seeing things different. Uh, but the old way of, of dealing with that is that, that, that people will say, uh, you are not right, I am right. And I will prove it. And I will give money to, to a scientist who will prove that I am right. Uh, and, and, and there are people who talk about those ideas and they earn money with it. So you have all these kind of small stories uh, which are based actually on economy uh, to get uh, your own story uh, as the one that is the best. And there's all politics of evolved and there are borders and there are companies, etc. So it's a really hard diffuse story so and, and and i think when we want to uh speed up all the problems we have and and, and solve those climate change problems and, and then we have to agree more uh so i think agreeing with each other takes a lot of time because of the conditioning of people and the money uh, the money stuff 
I think it would be very interesting not to focus on the details, but set a, a moonshot goal for the future, what we want to reach and uh, work together and, 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 and try to get everybody to talk a little bit the same story, not with a, with a yes or the no, this is right or this is wrong, but with a, with a direction. That's what I was talking earlier about, a collective story. So I believe what you do, Mark, with this podcast, you, you facilitate uh, uh, a collective story. Uh, you are part of it, creating it. Me too, and other people also who are, who are very interested in this, in, this, in this topic. And if we do our work really good, kids, younger, younger kids uh, will hear, hear about it and, and, and the direction of humanity will change in the right one and what the right one is i can i can say maybe that's what we feel as a humankind okay we, we know it's getting warmer we feel it and we know there's something wrong so we have to do something and uh uh the old ways of how are things how uh, uh, now like um, we have to agree with each other and, and make our point uh, that takes uh, too much time I, I, I appreciate you letting me put you on the spot. So I, uh, I hope that with all your knowledge, creative knowledge, and as a, as a wonderful chef and, and person who grows his own food and, and uh, kind of has that strong connection to uh, not only organic, but regenerative thinking and uh, seed banking and old types of species, uh, I've asked you to contribute a piece to my book menu B I hope I can lock you down to actually do that and and to be along the journey with us and, and give your views of, of your perspective and your experience and stories that that help shape this global narrative on global food reform and how that can really be a resilient <clears throat> change for humanity to shape the food of not just the food of the future but how we produce and live within our safe operating spaces of our planetary boundaries in a, in a healthy and a very wonderful way that the taste is there, that it's wonderful, but it's also healing humanity's health and solving our global grand challenges. I really uh, hope that I have you along for, for that journey because it's, uh, uh, it's one that's important for, for humanity to hear your version and your your aspect on that as well. Thanks. Yeah, you're right, Mark. <laughs> Let's make things a little bit better. Let's tell our stories. And to also the listeners, talk about this. It's important. When you when you tell somebody, your neighbor, about I I I I, I have this idea about a better future. Tell your idea. It's about the idea that we have to work on a better future. That's the important idea. So, so you, you spread the word. You you have mentioned that um, breathing food and water is the basic needs of humanity. It's mass. It's at the bottom of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. <clears throat> but you know, I'm a sustainable development goal advocate. I always wear my pin. <clears throat> I talk about it quite a bit. All 17 SDGs are tied to agriculture, seafood, food and beverage industries and, and the basic needs of humanity. There are, they're not for cities, for countries, for governments uh, or corporations. They are for humanity to meet the basic needs of humanity uh, because all 17 SDGs are tied uh, to food uh, and how we produce anything on this earth. And it really starts with our biodiversity and our biosphere. Um, the reason why I caveat that, because I want to know, do you think there is an earth shot, a moon shot? You mentioned moon shot earlier, uh, a global plan for the future. Do you think that there's a roadmap? Is it the Green New Deal? Is it the donut economics? Is it the circular economy? What one is it? And is there some kind of a plan to take us anywhere in the future uh, that you've heard about or that you know about uh, or one that you're working towards? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's also a big question, Mark, because um, <laughs> it's all connected together. But 
when I, yeah, I like to tell uh, solutions to people that maybe are not possible because it, 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 it's, it's, it, it gets into their imagination. They, they start thinking and that's, I think, what we should do. So all those things that are there, the donut economy, the, the SDGs, they're important to, to lead the way. Uh, and I have also my own idea, my utopian idea, which I, which I, uh, which will be working on together with the, the future food city. Uh, that's a, a nice project. That. But the idea behind that, 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 that there's a world 200 years from now where everything is solved and uh, humanity is com complete uh, in, in in balance with with with, with spaceship Earth. Uh, everything works together and. Um, everybody is creative and we make music and it's a good world. Uh, and the, I think the, the most uh, uh, important thing of that world is, is that the food itself and uh, the, the stuff we work with, the materials, the wood, uh, but also water, those are the new currencies. The, that's the new money. So I think the biggest problem is, is that food and water became products we could sell uh, and 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 um, we started using those products and using those those things to, to yeah to create a world where everything is in one place and the rest isn't in in, in the other place um, so i think money is the biggest problem <laughs> uh, it's yeah. basically you're saying that we turned food and our basic needs into a commodity yeah so it's uh, we turned it not only into money but we started to gamble against it turned it into commodity and trading and investing it and you know trading grain here trading rice there trading other basic needs and then yeah. local local farmers and food producers said oh it's i can make more money producing food from the netherlands for germany than i can for people in the netherlands locally or i can make more money to produce food to, you know for china uh if i'm australia produce meat beef and cattle or, or vice versa than actually taking care of <clears throat> this local this very local economy first and community these community food webs that then we think about after we've taken care of our own infrastructure, our own economies, our own community, that we then kind of think about the rest of yeah. the cities and countries around us as exactly. global citizens. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's exactly what I mean. It's, it's also, I, I'm a co-owner of a chocolate factory uh, and we do it, we say the right way, but that's our story, okay? It, um, so our chocolate is way more expensive than than the than the the, the big uh, the big companies, but there you can also you could also say as humanity is it necessary for us Europeans that we eat chocolate every day? Maybe it's 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 it it makes more sense for a balanced out world if well we, we when it's Christmas we celebrate and then we eat a little bit of chocolate. And it becomes a really special moment, a memory. And for the rest of the year, we don't need chocolate. Uh, um, the same goes for all the kinds of um, products that are made with, with um, well, let's say, uh, uh, Dutch tomatoes. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm from the Netherlands. We have a very big uh, way of, uh, a very big um, industry of tomatoes. Yeah, and I think, well, is it necessary to, to sell those all around the world? Well, it's good for the Netherlands. Yeah? We have a, a very uh, wealthy country and our kids are happy with good education. But we're, what we're doing, we are selling a lot of tomatoes uh, to other countries with all, with all problems uh, with, for, for climate change, etc. cetera. Uh, but that gives us a lot of money so we can uh, educate our kids but we educate them uh, uh, to live uh, sustainable, et cetera, so, but it makes no sense. So I think we should think about that. How, how are we doing things? And what you were talking about, uh, more local uh, foods would be very nice. And think about what we really need. If you step into the supermarkets in a Western country, uh, I think it's ridiculous. 
<laughs> that we can that we can choose uh, between uh, well 16 brands of peanut butter or yeah why is that we only need one uh, and we don't need to eat uh, peanut butter all day long every you know what I mean we we should um, shift as humanity towards a more yeah self-producing um, um, yeah how do you say it um, if you grow a, yeah so yeah <laughs> if, if 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 you grow ten uh, percent of my of my uh, yearly food um, uh, stuff as a, as a family myself and I, and I trade with 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 with, with uh, gardens from the neighborhood and it's uh, yeah I think it's a better way you 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 provide food for each other you connect with each other you you agree on more with each other because uh, you need each other um, and 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 uh, yeah I think that's important that's the power of uh, of humanity it's not uh, about uh, earning money with those stories if you know what i mean yeah yeah i i really do and i appreciate you kind of diving into my hard questions for 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 that and and the big topic obviously the hardest question i have for you today is actually the burning question wtf and uh yeah, we've been saying what the fuck quite a bit uh, over these last 12 months, but it's not the question. That's not the burning question. The burning question is what's the futures? And I want to know for you, for your studio, for what you do, what's the futures? What's your vision? Where do you see us going? Where do you see us need to go? Do you have a plan? Do you have a direction of, of where you're going to be here five, nine years from now, 2030, 2050? You mean all of myself and my studio, right? What's the futures for you? I mean, do you yeah. do you have a plan? Can you share it with me? Yeah, I, I'm yeah, not yeah. familiar I've, with it. I have a plan. And the plan is I want to uh, connect with as many people as possible. Um, and I do that with a project called the Future Food City. Uh, I, I told a little bit about it before. And I want to work uh, together with, with people like you and, and other uh, who are interested and to set a series of experiences which we will showcase at exhibitions at schools uh, to yeah to to get, get connected with the audience and invite the audience to come and live in that future food city a digital city where they become citizens of the future of a, of a better world if that works out in the, the coming years then then we'll be uh, yeah providing uh, like a, a moonshot for for human for humanity that's where one we want to go not a moon not a moonshot for uh, uh, one company or for for Jasper or for mark but a moonshot for all of us uh, created by all of us that's what my vision would be for the future of, of a better world and for also for my for myself as a, as a person and I, I've accomplished my dream I think if, if I can make that, happening that that would be really cool and and then uh, if i can also show it in a museum <laughs> because that's that was my the reason why i started creative chef studio show food and bring it to the museum uh, then i'm very happy yeah i think some sometimes you have to start in a museum or designed or an experience uh, uh um a display a gallery somehow so that people can visualize it whether it's digital online or offline so that they can first say what does that look like what you know and and some of the books you know dixon despombier is one of the first people to do this um the vertical garden concept using yeah. sky rise uh, uh buildings to as food food buildings and and growing your food and and vertically in in these buildings and um, I think you need to sometimes first start creative designed artwork in 3D and, and digital or in museums and galleries, things so that people can envision to, to, because I'll, what we see on TV, there's a lot of dystopian things. What we see in media is a lot very dystopian. It doesn't show us a bright, optimistic future, how the future would work and how it could work. And so because we don't have that vision, 
we also have a little bit of trouble creating architecture, engineering, designing, moving forward to achieve that because we don't have a lot of visualization. Whereas when you and I kind of come from the sci-fi, Star Trek, and those things where we saw these crazy things of the future, but we could kind of engineer and try to achieve most of those 3D printing and technologies and things to, to reach that. And most of those have come in pretty come pretty far along, but there's not a lot of things currently right now that show us um, what possibly that better sustainable future would look like or that future food city. I'm excited to, to work with you on it. Matter of fact, tomorrow we have a little meeting about it. So I'm excited to, to work and hear more and, and uh, see how we can move forward with this. Uh, I, I think you're on, on the right track for sure. And Thank you, I'm Mark. excited. You bet. I'm excited to yeah. change the world with you on that. Uh, and I, I think you're a lot of other people are really in alignment with you as well. Um, there, there's this big thing, and I don't know if you want to get into it or not, or if you've put a lot of thought into it. We touched briefly on this human condition that, um, you know, there's, there's thousands of people and they kind of seem to be moving in the same direction for a better planet. Um, but they're all kind of doing their own thing. They're doing their project here and their project there, or um, especially around climate activism. There's a lot of people uh, doing climate activism, but they're not really collaborating. It's their project, it's their thing. And, and they're almost sometimes fighting against each other. I mean, yeah. um, you know, and, and it's this human condition. Why are, why are we fighting against each other? Why are we not collaborating and being creative together and cooperating together? Instead, it's my project, my way, the highway, um, you yeah. know, type of a deal. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on, and, and, and I break it down to, what are your thoughts on this neoliberalism, this neo-Darwinism? Yeah natural selection only the strong survive survival <laughs> of the fittest severe yeah. competition fuck everybody else yeah. we're just you know it's all about uh, it's me the, and it, yeah, it's, it's the core like what you were saying it's it's exactly the the main problem of humankind of humanity it's what i'm doing at this moment you give me a stage to tell me something about it's about a project i came up with the future food city and I want people to know about it. And I, I take the stage and I tell everybody it's the best idea and they should participate. And then in the end, I earn a little bit of money with it. And when somebody else comes with an idea, then, then it becomes a threat. Yeah, that's, and and uh, um, that's exactly the, the essence of, of, of the problem we are facing. The threat of, of, of not uh, being given a stage as, as, as a person, because everybody thinks he or she has a good idea. In fact, we all have good ideas, but the, the ones that shout a lot, like me at this moment, they, they, they come a little bit above, above other opinions. And then, yeah, some people follow that idea or some people say, I don't like it. But that's exactly the point. I think, uh, uh, and that's, uh, <laughs> Uh, to, to redirect it to, to the future food city. That's the idea behind it. Because when you create something where everybody can shout out and tell about their good idea, but when it's in the good frame, then we are, we are, we are having progress. But we, you were talking, we, you were telling me it's also this, uh, it's also money that's make, it's making it difficult. Because you talk about those social development goals, I talk about future food. And uh, I do that because it gives me a, a, a good feeling. Uh, I'm doing something good and I earn money with it. Uh, but when there are a lot of people doing what I do, I earn less money. Uh, so it's really interesting for people to come up with new ideas, new direction because of the money money system. Um, and maybe that's we should, yeah, that, that's a big problem. I, I, and I don't know, no, I don't know what the, what the, what the exact answer is. Maybe we should stop having money, Mark. 
Yeah, de decentralized uh, um, new system, new economic model, one that um, is much different than, than we're used to. It's yeah. kind of, it's not a extractive economy. It's not a capitalistic economy. It's a one that works for everyone. And it's more in line with ecological economics and it's exactly. uh, decentralized and, and secure. It's a trustless system. Um, that leads me to my next question. You've kind of already answered it before, but I want to frame it in a different way to see if you can succinctly kind of tell us your version of your thing. I, we, I, I appreciate you going into the future of food city and, and your visions of that. But what does a world that works for everyone look like for you? <laughs> um, I think it's not possible <laughs> because uh, maybe when humanity isn't there anymore. But okay, that's a that's a that's a bad one. Maybe no, it's a it's a hard one. Um, a world that works for everybody. Well, I think we can we can make it better in a way that that we are more but we were more uh, in balance with the world and uh, everybody has good education. Uh, we have less people on planet and we grow our own foods. Um, uh, we're not busy with, with, um, with money. Um, we respect each other. Uh, we see each other also and we respect the people with disabilities. Uh, we hear each other, we learn in schools not only uh, to do maths and, and to learn to read, but we also learn to, uh, 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 to get along with each other. We learn about food, how to grow your food, maybe a little bit go back to the older ways of doing stuff, maybe to the medieval times, uh, but then on a, on, a, on a tech level, I think that's a, that's a, a better way of doing things. I, I think it's interesting because, you know, the way you start out, you say, um, I'm not sure it's possible, right? Yeah. That, that's, uh, that's this neo-Darwinism. That's that neoliberalism. It's severe competition, natural selection, survival of the fittest. Yeah. Only the strong survive. And it's this, this that we're against each other, but we, we, we started out our conversation. We're all on the same spaceship Earth. We're all yeah. Earthlings. We're all crew members. There's no passengers. We're all homo sapiens. There's nobody dropped off here from the spaceship Netherlands or spaceship Germany or spaceship USA. Uh, we were all dropped off here through stardust star stuff we crawled out of the primordial soup elements of basic elements of life from this earth and um all of a sudden we're now fighting against each other there it has been dispelled disproven neoliberalism neo-darwinism it doesn't fucking exist i'm sorry i've sworn three times on this podcast so far but it just doesn't exist what we've learned through science, through math, through, through history of our planet is that our earth was formed through these basic elements and we crawled out of this primordial soup through bacteria, through microorganisms. And the only way we went from a single celled organism to a nucleated cell organism and evolved into the human beings that we are now is through cooperation, collaboration, that those things work in harmony. One's waste is another one's food and vice versa. This whole symbiosis of how life in our earth really works is so important to understand. But yet we have this human con condition that divides us from one another. I mean, it, there's some wonderful things like Carl Sagan said that if uh, someone were to visit from outer space, from another planet, and look at the Earth and say, why are we all fighting against each other? Aren't you all the same species, all brothers and sisters, distant cousins? Why are you fighting against each other? And um, I really strongly am optimistic, I'm, I guess maybe in some regards naive, 
but I believe there is a way for the entire world to work with each other, that there is a plan and a way for, for us all to have a system that works for everyone, that no one yeah. is poor or hungry or different. I, I think I always agree. have, yeah. yeah I, I agree, but that there's also something like, uh, as a humankind, we also find it hard to do stuff if there is no nothing to fight for, you know what I mean? I always have this, this the, the things I remember most are, are the problems that I solved. So I'm proud if I, if I solve the problem. So as human beings, we need so-called problems to, to, uh, to, to feel alive, to, to get stuff, stuff done. So I believe, I understand what you're saying, but we need as, you, as humanity to work together, not fight each other. Uh, and maybe the problem we, we have to fight for is this problem, climate change. Maybe it's, it actually is a good thing in Darwinistic thinking that, that it unites uh, us people to work on it. Uh, we only have a, a few problems left that, that, that there is money and not, we cannot reach everybody. And some people aren't. Uh, busy with the topic of we were talking about a uh, couple of minutes um, or they learn other stuff maybe that's the key when we start to have a, a common uh, educational system every kid in the world learns the same stuff with from from a from a from a, from a perspective that is a a, 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 a building perspective yeah? to 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 get connected with earth again maybe that's a good a good way of seeing things when when a kid in china learns about to, to grow food and trading with his neighbors then when he comes to germany or the U united states everybody understands he, he him or her and and then you will get yeah then, then then we know what we should do but we need a problem i i i think there will always be problems or things that we can solve i just don't believe that they need to be against each other. Yeah. That we need to limit other people's growth or or development. Um, the thing that you mentioned, I see as <clears throat> I, I I really think about the future quite a lot. I think about how what solutions and innovations, and and I would love to see something, whether it's formulated as learning or education or development for humanity to, to move forward um, as this real time update of collective intelligence. And what I mean by that is that maybe it's once a day, maybe it's once a week that we take the collective intelligence or learning of humanity and everyone receives that. We all have that. I mean, right now we get it through books and movies and reading and, 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 and uh, you know, media and, and different places. We get it from word of mouth. You and I speaking, you know, back, I remember when I was growing up, uh, you know, these firesides, I was with my grandparents or my, my parents and we'd be camping or be around these fireside type of chats where tell stories and kind of yeah. what happened in the past. And you'd get this this on the ground local collective intelligence and ind indigenous wisdoms that you could apply and, and it adds to your collective intelligence for, for further. Right now we're got a lot of fake news, a lot of misinformation, and we're repeating a lot of the same mistakes we made back in the seventies and made back in the thirties and, and made back in, in, in history. We're not learning, we're not getting better. We're not being more efficient, we're not, uh, uh, dealing with these problems. I mean, in 2000, uh, uh, 2000, yeah, in 2000, there was Al Gore's problem with the dimple chat on the voting against um, George Bush Jr. And uh, then again, with the inauguration with uh, the Oompa Loompa, the orange guy, um, <laughs> uh, that thank God he didn't win, that we had another inaugurate, uh, another voting problem you know, uh, issues. What the fuck? I mean, here's the fourth swear word. I'm sorry, you guys. Yeah. I, I don't know. I just get so, uh, how hard is it to figure out 
uh, a voting thing and when you've experienced it before you know with something yeah. else are, are we gonna find are we gonna just keep repeating those mistakes or are we yeah really man, oh, being... maybe yeah maybe we maybe this era now is a big big problem for humanity and it brings us together for a short moment of time in a good direction to solve this problem uh, but then <laughs> Uh, humanity will be a little bit better off with 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 uh, with a good climate and we are safe and, and we we start to grow our foods differently but then human humanity needs a new problem so there will be yeah. always will be problems uh, to solve yeah, yeah? yeah. so yeah uh, i i think we can solve them faster and that with collective intelligence but yeah. enough of my tangents this was really about you and i have three last questions for you they're yeah. selfish, they're for my audience. I want my listeners to hear this message, these messages from you. If there was one message you could depart to my listeners that has the, uh, as a sustainable takeaway that has the power to change their lives, what would it be, your message? Uh, believe in a better world and uh, uh, communicate it if you do that then you start to be uh, behave differently and uh, so so spread the world uh, the word uh, believe in a better world tell them tell to your neighbors the kid your kids around it just communicate that's that's it's it's maybe a, a a simple one but i think that's the first step we need to, to do uh, start uh, communicating a positive hopeful future and uh, communicate it to everybody. You you might have already answered this, but what should young innovators in your field be thinking about if they're looking for ways to make real impact? So I guess that's creatives and artists and chefs and people who kind of like and do the same things that you're doing, but they want to make a real impact. They want to move forward. What should they be thinking about? Uh, they shouldn't be think thinking about the uh, money <laughs> um, they should be thinking about uh, getting uh, getting their innovative projects uh, based upon a more a more local um, uh, vision so, so so look around you your, look around you not 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 think about how to sell it overseas everywhere you start small and make it really good and uh, see what value it has to offer not only the money value but the value for for planet earth so maybe yeah. they should define what value is for their companies and say okay I'm, I'm having a bank account one is for the money to make it happen and the other one is a bank account a, account with for progress and for a better world something like that i think they that's the, the most important thing they should have in their purpose of a company I love it. I love it. Yeah, I had uh, a Dr. Professor Mohammed Yunus from Grameen Bank and uh, a world of three zeros on the podcast. And he said a very similar thing. He said, you know, it should really be about social business, social progress, and how can we make the world a better place, better than we found it. And, and it has nothing to do with money, but the money tends to come, the rewards and benefits tend to come. They're throughout history, we've seen numerous people out there who have had no incentive for money but they're gone down in our history books for having big impacts on our world and you know whether it's mother Teresa or whether it's gandhi and many yeah. many many others you know i don't yeah I don't creatives if everybody yeah. remembers who mozart is but nobody yeah. remembers who was the bank uh, ceo of the bank in that that time you know exactly so um yeah. And then the last question is really, what have you experienced or learned in your professional journey so far that you would have loved to know from the start? That <laughs> um, would be that I, I came more uh, in contact with the idea that people will have a different perception on things. When you are young, you think your way is the way everybody thinks. I wish I'd learned to uh, to learn that lesson a, li a little bit earlier because 
Um, if I would have understand that, that I started much earlier with um, designing my projects the way I'm doing it now. I used to tell the story uh, I wanted to tell and I wanted to be uh, the best and uh, I wanted to be uh, the smartest, etc. So I, 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 I struggled. Yeah? But if I would have known earlier that that uh, that that yeah that everybody has their own perception their own uh, look at things then i would have used that information to uh, yeah to include uh, other people's uh, stories and use my own story uh, to communicate a, a, a topic but but yeah work together more i i think if i knew that more uh, earlier in my life uh, then I, I would be, uh, but uh, oh yeah, on the other hand, I learned a lot also. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah, uh, Jasper, my creative friend and creative chef, thank you for letting us inside of your ideas today. And it's been wonderful to have you on the, the podcast. And uh, I hope to see you live in person very soon. We'll talk again tomorrow. But uh, thanks for being on the show. Mark, thank you. Keep it going. I will. Thank you. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Talk to you later.